um, we are going to talk about how to be able to start getting more paid speaking gigs. Okay. So with that said, let's see what it is. I, Cause I always like to tell people, you know, are you in the right spot? Like, is this right for you? Well, you are in the right spot if you are a speaker who loves getting out on stage, right? I know I certainly feel like that myself. If you are love getting out on stage, but you just haven't been able to generate as much revenue from the stage as you would like, okay? For whatever reason, we'll talk about that. Uh, you are also in the right spot if you're a speaker who has wants to get paid to speak, but you have no idea where to get started. A lot of people are in this boat, okay? How many people are open to this idea where they're like, boy, you know what? Just a quick show of hands. I'd like to be able to get paid. I'm not really sure where to get started. Let me see. Anybody? Yeah, a little bit. Good. That's fine. That's good. That's that's where we are. That's where I used to be. It's, it's what we're going to cover. Um, and then the other thing, and, and Linda talked about this as well in her terrific introduction, um, you're looking to impact more lives. You're looking to impact more lives. You're looking to get your message out to a wider audience. You know, you're looking to be able to do all of this through public speaking. Um, and you want to be able to have this conversation around generating either. And I talked to Linda about this, too, and then we've talked with you guys, you know, in terms of just in general. Public speaking, we're going to be focusing a lot of our time on getting paid to speak. And then we're also going to do a little bit on how to turn free talks into paying clients. Because regardless of how you do this, public speaking is one of the best places that you can do that. Okay. So some different things that you're definitely going to learn. You're going to learn a common misconception around getting paid to speak and how you can overcome it. Big, big thing. You are also going to learn six groups that hire, that bring people in. Linda alluded to this earlier. Who the heck is bringing these people in? Well, there are six groups that do that, okay? And we're also going to give you some specific thoughts, like I said, on growing your business through public speaking, um, even if you're doing it for free. I alluded to that a little bit. I like kind of sneaking that in there because there are some people who are like, boy, you know what, Brian? I really don't need to get paid to speak, but you're making sense. Can I do? But I'm doing speaking, but I'm not getting the clients. I had somebody like that the other day. Okay. So with all of that said, before we get into that, let me tell you just real quick a little bit about myself. So again, my name is Brian Hilliard. Um, I am, a, as Linda alluded to, I am a speaker and coach, started my business back in 2001. Okay. So I was doing a lot of speaking and I actually started off as a speaker. You know, when I started and people have a hard time believing this, there was a time when you said the word coach that people thought you were talking about football, basketball, or soccer. Like they didn't, and that's fine. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying there was a time 2001 was one of those times <laughs> and they didn't really know what that was all about. OK, so what I did is I was doing a lot of speaking and people would be like, can we talk with you some more? And I was like, sure. Then they're like, can we talk again? I'm like, sure. And then finally, I'm talking to these people, you know, three, four, five times. Well, not three or four, but like two or three times. And I'm like, I got to charge you something like I have to charge you something. So my first client, you ready for this? My first client was forty nine dollars a month. I just took a number. I couldn't. I had two. They were sisters. And, and I was like, wow, you know, let me just, I couldn't believe that anybody was paying me just to sit down and talk with them. Okay. So it was really, it was really, really different. Um, one of the things I always tell people is I'm sure you could tell Linda was talking about where people are from. I grew up in Connecticut. Um, I actually went to Duke and I had a marketing minor economics major. And so I'm living down here in Fayetteville, North Carolina now. And it's something where I've been in the, I used to live in Georgia for about 17, 18 years. I've been in Fayetteville for about seven years. So I've been saying about 25 years here in the Southeast, worked at, you know, GE Capital and some other places across the country. Actually, I think Linda and I were talking about this. I spent some time, um, I, I forgot where you are in Texas. It's, I don't know if it's Houston or Dallas. I'm trying to remember. Dallas. Dallas. Okay. I lived in Addison. Um, and, and had a chance to spend some time down there when I was working uh, for GE Capital at the time. So had a chance to kind of do all of those different things. Went to school uh, at Duke, like I've said. Started in 2001, wrote seven books. I'm actually knocking out my eighth one right now. It's going to be on how to overachieve without overcommitting. Um, it is a conversation around getting stuff done without killing yourself in the process. This is going to be the second edition of that. So I'm knocking that out as well. So we're getting ready to get number uh, numero ocho on the books, which is which is kind of cool. 
Um, but what I do here, and what we're gonna talk with most of you ladies about today, is showing speakers how to generate more revenue from their public speaking activities, okay? And whether that is getting paid to speak straight up or being able to get turning free talks into paying clients, we're gonna be able to give you some different step-by-step -step ideas of what I personally do. I run people through this in my program. We have a networking group to be able to do that because here's the thing. And I don't know about you guys. Um, I can't speak for everybody, but I can speak for myself and others. Obviously, people I've worked with, people I've talked to and, and done some of the different things. You have speakers who are out there speaking for free. And that's fine. I'm not knocking it. It's not a problem. You have speakers who are saying they're getting clients from that. They're trying to increase their profile. Zero, zero problem. But here's the thing. I get people who come to me and they're like, you know what, Brian? I want to be able to, I want to be able to get on bigger stages. I want to be able to impact more lives. I want to be able to get paid what I'm worth, like as a speaker. That's what I want to be able to do. But here's the problem that they tell me, and maybe you guys fall into this boat. They're like, I have no idea where to start. Who do I talk to? What groups hire paid speakers? Um, what do I say to them, right? Uh, do I need a book? Linda brought that up earlier. Do I need a podcast? What about a web page? Do I need a website? Like all of the, and on and on it goes. And what happens to a lot of people? Probably you're in that boat. I can speak for myself and say, I was in that boat. You don't do anything. I'm not disrespecting anybody. I'm not. I'm, I'm talking about what happened to me. I'm probably talking a little bit about maybe your experience. You don't do anything. You just get stymied. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to be able to unpack some of that and, and to be able to, to, to be successful when it came to public speaking. Because one of, we talk about this, and, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier, a couple of points that you want to think about. Number one, and I don't think I'm telling you guys anything that you don't know. If you're here at this session, I'll bet $100 that every person says yes, that they understand this next point, which is public speaking is one of the single best ways to grow your business. You know, I mean, a hundred dollars a head. I'll take that bet. You said maybe there were 50 people on there, Linda. Maybe I get, maybe I win whatever that is. Maybe I get 50,000 or 5,000. We'll have to think about that, but I get money. Okay. <laughs> that speaking is the single best way to grow your business. I mean, it's just, there shouldn't be any question about that. All right. And let me talk about the second thing though, too. There's this common misconception. Remember, I talked about that earlier, and I was going to let me unpack that. There's this common misconception that in order to get paid to speak, you have to be this big name brand. You know, you're Barack Obama, you're Tom Clancy, you're, you know, the King of England, you're, you're or the Queen. Like, you're, you, you have to be this huge name brand to get paid to speak. And that is not true. Okay. There are, here's what I tell people. There are conferences that are out there, and this is, might be a good thing to kind of keep in mind. There are conferences out there right now where someone of similar professionalism, work ethic, and just overall ability to you is getting paid to speak. They're either giving them a check right this second as we speak, or they're at the Bellagio as we speak, delivering a keynote or a breakout session or at the, you know, Texas Stadium, or at, I think it's Cowboy Stadium now, or at someplace in Chicago, or New York, or in Budapest. I don't know about that as much, but you get the idea, okay? There are people who are out there right now. And what I tell people is part of this, and you'll hear me come back to this a little bit later on as well, is part of it is a mindset conversation, if you don't mind me saying. We're going to get into skill set. Don't get me wrong. We will cover skill set. But some of this is a mindset conversation as well. We don't think we deserve. We don't think we can. We feel not we're good enough. We're not sure what else. We're looking at other people's pricing. We're not up to them. They have 30 books. We don't have any. Some of it's mindset. Okay. And I have to tell you, when that clicked for me and I realized, OMG, I can actually go out and get paid to speak and this is not going to be a problem. People want to be able, here's the other thing. People are looking for you as a speaker. They're not looking for you to come up with something new. They're looking for you to come up with a different spin of what they already know to be true. That's what they want. Okay. So let's get into some of these logistics. 
Um, like I said, live in North Carolina now, seven books, over 300 episodes, uh, leadership mindset, and how to overachieve without overcommitting. And today, we are going to talk about, I like to break it down into challenges because this that's just the way this one's organized. We're going to talk about the top four challenges that speakers face when getting paid to speak and obviously how you can overcome them. Is everybody okay with this so far? People can hear me okay? We're good thumbs up? Okay, good, 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 good. All right, well, then let's jump in. We're going to go backwards, okay? So, numero cuatro. Challenge number four, top four challenges on speakers when they're getting paid to speak is... The big kahuna question, isn't it? Okay, Brian, where the heck do I, what groups hire paid speakers? Like, let's start with that. All right, so here's the deal. You're going to want to think about it this way. I wrote it down this way. So I went old school with this, okay? I wrote it down. There are six things, and you're going to want, and I'll go over it. I see Nona, like, squinting. This will be fine. I'm going to go over <laughs> it. You don't have to squint. Okay, but you can squint, but you don't have to. These are going to be, these are the six that we're going to talk about. And then I broke it down into two columns, ease and money, because that's important too. Some are easier to get than others. Some have more money than others. Is everybody okay with that? That makes that make sense what the heck I'm trying to do? Okay. All right. So here we go. I'm going to run through them first so you can jot them down. Then we're going to circle back and do the ease and the money. Okay. Just so you know the format. All right, so what we got here is we have got the uh, corporations, conferences, nonprofits, franchise conventions, schools, trade associations. All right, let me say it again corporations and conferences, nonprofits, franchise conventions schools, trade associations. That's our six. Okay. Now, like I said before, not a lot of people, when they think paid speaking gigs, they, they gravitate towards corporations. And that's part of it. But here's the thing. Now we're going into the two columns. That is not the easiest to get. I would say very hard on the ease meter. Okay. Like, corporations, you have to really know someone. If it's a past corporation that you've worked at, that's a good start, but sometimes that doesn't work out. Corporations are very hard. However, on a scale of one to five, with five being the money, okay, corporations are five. The challenge is that the long that the, the that the cycle can be so long. I've had a I, was, I don't know if it was a friend of mine or maybe I just read it where they're like I was working so hard on this I started doing it and then they <laughs> they changed leaders and next thing you know you didn't have that person anymore and they had to start all over again. It was a reorg. I mean that's not funny. All right, conferences and expos. That is very easy. Why? The Bellagio point that I made earlier. There's someone at the Bellagio right now. There's five more people that just got started. They're three hours behind me. The Bellagio has just gotten started. MGM Grand just got started. Okay. And there are people getting ready to go. It's going to be going all in the night. You know how that works out there. Okay. Very easy. And that on a money scale is a three, though. They don't always have the money. All right, nonprofits. I'm putting that medium to hard. Why? Because depending on the size, it gets progressively harder, doesn't it? If I'm going to try to talk to the Red Cross at their annual convention, that's probably harder than me going to the local Alzheimer's Association. And no disrespect to either organizations. Okay. Money is also a little bit of, I put that down as a one, but that really can be anywhere from a one to a three. Again, depending on size. I think you're getting, you understand what the heck I'm talking about. All right, number four. Oh, and by the way, I should have said this up front. You're going to want to pick, you guys are going to want to pick like two or three that resonate with you. Sorry, I should have mentioned that up front. So corporations, conferences, I'm a conference man. That's one that I like. Okay, number four, and I'm also a convention man, franchise conventions. That's a medium. Brian, why is that a medium versus a hard or very hard? Because franchise have conventions every year. See, I come from that school of thought where I don't even get into like whether or not the people are like, I know that franchises have conventions each year. I know that. So if I know that going in, okay, 
then why wouldn't I put myself in the position to be successful? I put franchise conventions as a medium, money at a three. Nothing wrong with franchise money. Schools, that can be hard. I mean, like at the county level, not talking about your kid's elementary school. That's very easy. I'm talking about the county level where they're going to give you some money. Okay. That can be almost just as hard as corporations, except not as much money. I put that down as a two. Okay. And then last but not least, trade associations. Those are very easy. They always have conferences. And they also have the ability to hire you out for training. So you get a two for one with these people. I put them down money-wise as a two. They're not a five. They're not a four. You can get a two, maybe a three, but you're fine. Now, just so we can figure this out in terms of order and money, because people ask me this. Okay, so you want to think of money like what should I charge? What does this look like? Hierarch think of it like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We're all familiar with that, right? Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Okay, so you start at the bottom. And in the paid speaking world, you just get travel expenses. Let's call that a one, just to calibrate this, okay? And then what happens is you keep moving up and you get a honorarium. Let's call that three to 500. Hey, you know what? We'll give you travel plus here's three bills. And that's fine, okay? Then what happens is you start getting a little bit more serious, a breakout room. That's where you're starting to get into the threes, just so you know, okay? They might give you one to $2,000 for that plus travel. We want you to come in, Brian, and talk about networking like a pro. Oh, that's nice of you. What are you going to do? Well, you're going to give you $1,500. Really? And we're also going to fly you out. Oh, that's nice. Can I join the golf tournament? Yes. Okay. I take those deals. By the way, I wound up winning the darn thing when I was out there, our team won. Don't be afraid to win the darn thing when you're out there. All right. So we did that. <laughs> Okay. And then you have your keep moving. Then a keto. All right. Now that's getting into more serious money. I tell people that's anywhere from two to 10. Now, obviously we're talking about people like ourselves. We're not talking about Tom Clancy. We're not talking about Ivan Meisner. We're not talking about, you know, these people we're talking about people like you, myself, two to 10. It's a good number. You take it. Okay. And then the last one might be to do the keynote and maybe do some training. This is where you're getting into corporations, right? Where they're like, oh, you know, we need you to come in and do this huge thing with HR or whatever your topic may be. Okay. And that's 10 plus. That can be 10 to 100. Like it can be anything. Okay. Is that making sense for everybody just to kind of calibrate them on what we're talking about? All right. So that's what we've got there. Now. Let's go. So that's challenge number four. We're still backing it down. By the way, we're going to have Q&A in the middle. I know it's a little different than what you guys have done in the past. So I don't want anybody to be surprised. After this, we're going to do a little Q&A. So just don't say it didn't work. All right. Challenge numero trace. All right. So what's a good step? Like, how do I get started specifically? Okay. I got three things down here that I like in no particular order, but these are, I think are important. All right, first one is the idea of you need to develop what I call a clear, consistent marketing message. It needs to be something that these people can understand. Let me tell you the biggest difference between getting paid to speak and doing free talks. With the latter, you can come in and speak and they're like, okay, that's fine because they know you or whatever, whatever, whatever. All right. With the former paid gigs, they need to be able to, like, people are coming to see you. In the latter, free stuff, they're not coming to see you or me. They're going to the chamber after hours event, and they see a speaker, and that's fine. And they'll take notes, and they're not rude, and you'll get people if you play your cards right. But the main thing is that they are looking, in a paid speaking endeavor, they are coming to see you. So these meeting planners need to make sure they understand what incarnation they can expect. Meeting planners and conference organizers is one of the few professions where they don't actually, they have to make a decision, make a point, and then they and 300 of their friends all find out at around the exact same time whether or not you were a good investment. I hire a CPA, only myself and my girlfriend knows whether that worked out. I go to the farmer's market and maybe get a bad batch of tomatoes. Maybe only I find out because I throw it out before I cook dinner. I hire a paid speaker. I'm giving them too large or whatever. 
You guys feeling me on this? You see where I'm coming from on that? You have to be able to have a clear, consistent marketing message for them. All right. What else? Um, you also want to, we're talking about good first step. You also want to be able to update your bio. There's no question you need to be able to do that um, to include your speaking topics. That's like the easiest thing in the world. Just put your speaking topics in there. You know, my speaking topics, what? Mar uh, mindset, leadership, and personal achievement. I usually call it high, achieve uh, uh, high performance success, actually, but whatever. Boom, 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 boom. Put them in there. Don't go more than three. That's the other thing. A lot of people, we put too much stuff in there. Don't do that. It's confusing. When you when when meeting planners and conference organizers see like 17 different topics, they get they don't like that. It makes them nervous. Like think about like an outdoor cat. If you were to come over to them, you know how they leave? That's what conference organizers do. They're like outdoor cats. All right. And then here's another thing that you can do in terms of, you know, speaking topics. And I'll open up for some, some questions as well, too, in a second. Um, in terms of a uh, good first step, be a, what you want to be able to do is, and this is a little bit of an, a medium step, but I love it. So it's not the, the easiest thing to do, but it's a great idea, I think. You're going to want to get a, so like on your speaking page, you'll have a topic for me, how to overachieve without overcommitting. Okay. Then what you're going to want to do is you have the title and then you have the, the description. Everybody with me on this? The topic, the title. Yeah, right? Okay. So then what happens is I do a video describing the topic, okay, so that people can understand and see me in action. What was the point that I made earlier? in terms of talking to people and, and doing some of these, <laughs> talking to people and doing some of these different things, okay? What was the point that I made earlier? I said that you wanna have people who are the, 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 the speakers, the meeting planners, they don't know what it is that you can bring to the table. They need to actually be able to see it, right? So how, what's the best way for them to see it? To be able to actually see you in action, isn't it? So if I'm a meeting planner and I see a little, you know, description of your deal, and then I see a, a video right above that, I can't help but click on it. I have to. We already made the point that they need to make sure that they don't screw this up. Okay. So what I do now, people ask me, I was actually on a podcast about, I don't know, an hour ago. And the, the host, she says, well, how should the, what should that video look like? What, what does it need to be? Video, very easy. It's about two and a half minutes. And what you do is you have it for each topic. Okay, very simple. So for mine, overachieve without overcommitting. I'll say, hey, guys, it's Brian. And, you know, if you're thinking about doing a, uh, I say, hey, guys, Brian Hilliard, thanks so much for considering this workshop. Um, you know, how to overachieve without overcommitting is a conversation about how to get stuff done without killing yourself in the process. We do a number of different things. And I just start going through the bullet points. Then I talk about how it's customizable, whether it's a workshop, training, keynote, breakout. And then I tell them who it's good for. Hey, listen, if you are a conference, you know, planner, excuse me, if you're a conference attendee, you've got some business folks, maybe an expo, I get into who it's good for. And I do it right there. Am I making sense? Let me get a show of hands if this is making sense. Is it making sense to everybody? We're good? Okay. All right. So those are some things that you can do right now, today, including, and let me throw one more in there. Um, including sprucing up the actual title. You'll notice I'm a how-to man, how to talk so others will listen, how to lead so others will follow, how to overachieve without overcommitting. 80 to 90% of my titles are how to get this benefit. That's another thing that you could do. A lot of people struggle with that. You want something punchy, you want something that makes sense, all right? All right, let's keep going here. So a couple of ways, I'm about halfway through. 
A um, couple ways to kind of keep the ball rolling if you want. I'm going to be sticking around afterwards. If you have any questions, you certainly can. That is zero, zero problem. Um, I also have, and I'll get into this a little bit later on. I also have, Linda has done a great job, obviously, all of you guys in this group. I actually have a speakers networking and mastermind group myself as well that's geared specifically for speakers who are obviously looking to be able to build their business through public speaking. All right. So if you want to be able to have any more information on that, you certainly absolutely can be able to connect. And I'll show you how you can do that here in a little bit. OK, uh, let me get into the last one. And I alluded to this before and we're going to get into it. Mindset. OK, we have got to get out of our own way. Now, one of the things as a speaker, a paid speaker is I mentioned this before, I'm going to say it again. I'm speaking for myself. I think I might be able to speak for some of you guys listening. You're thinking, and I was, I don't know if I have enough. I'm not sure if I'm good enough. I know there's someone better than me. I know there's someone who's been doing it longer than me. Oh, uh, Linda, you brought up the book. Do I need a book or a podcast? Short answer is no, you don't. Does it help? Yes. Former more than the latter, but it definitely is not necessary. Oh, well, this guy has seven books. Oh, well, this guy has five. Oh, well, this person's been, I don't know, lives in Vancouver and I don't. We got to take all of that. I'm telling you, you got to take all of that and you got to put it right out the airlock. Just like in the movies, out the airlock, okay? Because that is not helping you at all. So, Brian, well, how do I get around some of this, like, inner critic and, and, and making up excuses and, like, all of these types of things? Let's talk about that because it's, you know, Linda said that it's not theory. We're going to get into some, ta- we, I feel like we have got tactical, actually, but let's get into tactical on this. All right. Here's a, here is a great, great graph. I'd love to say I came up with it. I didn't. I saw it on LinkedIn about four or five years ago. All right. What happens is a lot of people, we start in our comfort zone, don't we? And what do we do as speakers? Well, we're just going to go in. We're going to do what we need to do and blah, 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 blah. And we're just going to keep getting free stuff because it's safe and we're in control. And that's fine. That's fine if that's what you want to say. But here's the thing. you People tell me, and we've talked about this, they want to impact more lives. They want to impact. They want to get on bigger stages. They want to get paid what they're worth as a speaker. Well, let me tell you exactly what's going to happen if you decide to think this. You're going to get into the fear zone. I'm just telling you, this is not magic. I'm telling you what will happen. You'll start be finding excuses for not to move. You'll start, oh, well, this comes up, or that's over there, or blah, 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 or I need this, or blah, 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 blah. There's a really good book out called Inner Excellence by Jim Murphy. It talks about the three greatest critics, three greatest adversaries, inner critic, monkey mind, and a trickster. This is where that fear zone takes place, all right? Then you get to the learning zone. Finally, we're learning some new skills and we're looking at what it is that we can do to be a paid speaker. Brian, what are some new skills? Well, good points that that were, were came up um, in terms of the questions, right? The idea of a new skill of making a phone call. The people are very receptive to hearing what you have to say. Hey, it's my name is Brian. I understand you have this event. When is the, who's the person I need to talk to? That's easy. Sending an email. That's easy. Negotiating price. That's a little harder, but it's still not a big deal. Updating your website. A little harder, but not a big deal. You're learning to deal with these problems. Am I making sense with everybody on this? You're learning. You're acquiring new skills. Maybe you're working with me or maybe you're working with somebody else. I don't know. Maybe you read a book. I, I don't know what you do. Exactly. But that's what's happening. And then what happens is you're able to go out there and you're able to ultimately get into the growth zone, okay? You're able to get into the growth zone. And what happens is that growth zone, let me tell you what it feels like and what it looks like. What it looks like is, you know, myself and my girlfriend going down to Tallahassee, Florida and doing a a keynote presentation, 200 people. I actually did a video on the football field I was going to run on the field. I was going to make an off-color joke, but I won't. But I was going to go on the, I was going to run on the football field, but I didn't think that was a good idea for me to do on a company. So I was down there and did a video and it was great. That's what it looks like. People coming up to you. you and the, the biggest, another misconception, 
once you get past this and you get to the growth zone, let me tell you what else happens. You realize that getting paid to speak, what you think now, if you're like me before, was that getting paid to speak is hard and that there's not enough opportunity. Once you break in, there's plenty of opportunity. I'll tell you why. I can prove it to you. Because the meeting planners want a known quantity. This isn't me making it up. This is what they want. Okay. I think golf, I'm a big sports man. Golf is the biggest meritocracy on all sports. If you don't like what you're getting in golf and you want to get more money, play better. Win another tournament, get a top 10. Guess what? You get better sponsorships, you get better tee times, and you get invited to the British Open. That's what happens when you win at the BGA. Speaking, same thing. If you're not happy with what it is you're doing, and I'm not trying to preach to you, but if you're not, get out there, you start playing your way into it. They want you to succeed. It's different than any other industry that I'm aware of. The people, the powers that be, want you to be, to be successful. So what does that look like in terms of getting out of your own way? Well, you guys know this, don't you? Getting into action. It's getting into action. It's spending time with Linda Fisk. It's coming to groups like this. It's maybe talking with me or somebody else. It's getting into action. Grant Cardone, I love this. He talks about three levels of action. He talks about this idea of do nothing. These are the empty chairs, quote unquote. I know this is virtual. It's better when you say it physical, but you get the idea. The empty chairs next to you, okay? These are people who just didn't show up. You then get the people who are in retreat. They come to this and they back off afterwards and be like, oh, well, I need to you know, do this, 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 and it's not getting caught up in the fear zone. Then they have just normal levels of activity. Oh, well, I'm just going to keep on doing what I'm doing and whatever, okay? No, getting into action is very, very simple. And I'm going to give you a real easy way to do this. I'm going to ask you, there's a couple of different ways that we, that we can connect. Number one, if you'd like, you want to learn, I talked a little bit about the speakers networking and mastermind group. It's a great little way to be able to move forward and do some different things. We have, it's a 90 minute group. We meet with people. We give some education. Um, you're more than welcome. Anybody on here is more than welcome to come as my guest. I'll show you how you can do that in a second. Second thing you can do if you want, let's do a one-to-one. -one. Let's talk about your speaking journey. Let's talk about where you are. Let's figure out what you need to do. Let's get a game plan. Let's pull some of this together. Okay, let's pull some of this together and let's move this forward. Let me give you a number that you can text to real quick. You ready? 678. 678-953-0435. Let me say it again. 678-953-0435. Here's what I'm going to ask you guys to, to text real quick. I put it actually on the screen. What's the one thing that you're going to implement from today's call? One thing. Give me one thing that you're going to do. Make sure to put your name and your time zone, if you don't mind, so I know who the heck this is. Okay? 678-953-0435. If you want some more information about our speakers net working group and mastermind group, let me know. If you want to do a one-to-one, -one, put down, I'd love to do a one-to-one -one or whatever you want. Okay. Send me a text of the one thing that you're going to do. Let's get into action and let's move forward and let's get past some of this mindset challenge that I hate to say it slows a lot of us down. Okay. That's how you got getting paid to speak. That's what some of the things tactically you need to do. Linda, I feel like I've accomplished what I set out to do. And if you have uh, any more questions, I'll be here. This was